In this video, we are going to see functional programming and pure functions. This is part two. And as usual, we are going to start with why. Why do we need functional programming? And let's try to understand this with a simple example. Let's say we have list of employees and let's call it input. And now our goal is to create a new list using existing list, but with the names of employee in uppercase. And let's call that list as output list. Now in Java, what we can do is we can simply call to uppercase method and we pass this list into that to uppercase method and this method will return us the list of employees in uppercase. But that's not it. We also have to tell Java how to do it. We have to define this method and we have to step by step write the logic there like create a new list then iterate over all the elements in input list make them uppercase and store each element into a new list and then return this list so basically what we are doing here is we are telling what to do like i want to make a list into uppercase and we are also telling java how to do it and this way of programming is called as imperative program but consider this example here where we are telling java to stream the elements of input list and then map each element to uppercase and then collect it into new list. So basically we are not telling Java how to do it. We are just telling Java what to do. And this kind of programming is called as functional programming where we express what we need rather than focusing on how to do it. And this is the beauty of functional programming. It makes our code concise, more readable and obviously then makes it more maintainable, right? But some of you might argue that the code that we have seen here with stream seems to be more complex but the thing is you have worked with imperative programming so much that the code that we saw in our previous slide was more familiar to you so don't get confused with familiar versus simple okay the code that we saw on previous slide is more familiar rather than simple another feature of functional programming is that it allow parallel processing of elements if you replace this stream with parallel stream okay, here, if you replace it with parallel stream, then it will process the elements parallelly. If you have thousands of elements in your input list, then it will process those on different core parallelly using fork join, then collect it into list. So that way our performance will improve. So that is one of the best feature of functional programming. And it also supports lazy valuation. In programming notion, if you heard anything related to lazy valuation, that means means this particular thing is done for performance improvement because unless and until we actually need something we are not going to evaluate it so it also support lazy evaluation which is really good thing and we are going to see lazy evaluation when we see video on streams functional programming is a very powerful tool but with the java we need to be very careful because java doesn't enforce function purity there are many languages which are purely functional language like haskell those languages enforce functional purity but in java it is not there so we need to be a bit cautious when using functional programming what i mean to say is it's our responsibility to use pure functions when we are using streams okay i think it's still not very clear so let's consider here an example now suppose we have a class and it has a static variable count okay and now we have a list of integers and this list contains integers from 0 to 1 lakh and what we are doing is we are streaming each element and for each element what we are doing is we are simply incrementing the count value by 1 obviously there are 1 lakh elements in list so count value would be 1 lakh at the end and we are going to print it right so let's try to run this program in IntelliJ okay so here is this program the same program and if we try to run this program the program prints 1 lakh which is correct right and now let's try to replace it with parallel stream okay that means this elements are going to be streamed parallelly on multiple cores and you see the value is different it says 33,000 elements are there which is wrong right that means when we use list dot stream it works correctly but when we use list dot parallel stream it does not work right and that thing is called as side effect and why it is happening because we are not using pure function here so the lambda that we have used here should be a pure function but it is not pure function that's why this this is happening now the next question is what is pure function because every time we are using lambda it's our responsibility that 
a lambda should be a pure function it's not going to cause side effect every time but it can cause side effect if we are not cautious about using it okay so then what is pure function so pure function is a function which does not modify any data that is outside this method or a function and it does not modify any state now consider this example here this square method here it takes an input number and returns the square of that number now this function here does not depend on count right and count is an external variable which is outside this method right so any function or a method which does not modify any data that is outside this method okay even this input parameter right in this case it is a primitive type right so it won't affect but even if it is you know object or a list we should not modify any input argument to that method so anything that is outside this method should not be changed and even there should not be any you know database changes like insert query update query right so that is one of the important properties your pure function that it should not modify any data that is outside this method okay and it should not even modify any state like doing database update or insert kind of things okay and another property is its behavior should not depend on any data that is outside so first one is it should not modify any data that is outside this method and any data that is outside this method if they are modified this should not affect our function i'll give you an example consider this area of a circle method here this method method uses a variable pi which is outside this method right and it returns area of a circle pi r square now we are calling area of a circle for 10 right and it returns correct value but suppose if I write if I overwrite this pi value with 100 right then my output would change right that means my output of this method depends on an external variable that means for a given input it produces two different output depending upon the state of other variables right so this is not a pure function pure function should never depend on anything that is outside this method it should only depend on input argument that means if we pass input argument no matter what it should return same output for that given input argument so these are two important properties of a pure function and it's our responsibility to use pure functions as lambda okay and in next videos we are going to see functional interfaces lambdas and streams api so thank you see you again bye bye